know, I don't care if we could if we could pop 25 wells here and get all the water we wanted. That's not the point. The point is that we own that. Exactly. And I'll tell you something else. This whole battle is not about spotted owls, wilderness areas, and all that. It's who's going to control that water. Because nobody's going to shut that aqueduct down, Kim. It's too valuable a resource in an area like this that's been in a drop for 10 years. Okay, so it's about, all about who's going to control it. See, what we're seeing, Steve, just in different flavors, we're seeing that same water controlled by the Forest Service all throughout the West. Oh, I know that. I know that. I'm almost 50, and I say that. So anyway, Joan, it's a beautiful morning here in Tombstone, Arizona. And you all seem to be uh, looking to put up a fight against the federal government to secure your land and water rights. What, what are your feelings about, you know, the fight that is going on right now? I think it's unjust. I think it's unfair. I think it's uh, micromanaging to the nth degree. Uh, after witnessing the uh, monument fire last year and knowing that uh, the uh, Forest Service helped burn down Los Alamos a couple years back, uh, partially burned down Nixville. I think they need to uh, find another job to be more qualified to do. Now, a lot of people are confused. Is this more of the EPA or is this actually the Forest Service doing this? I think it's coming from the White House. Coming from the White House. Now, a lot of I'm my friends. I'm 100% wrong on that, but uh, it's uh, my, yeah. my, my sentiments about it. Yeah, a lot of my friends would agree with you. Uh, now, we're going up there today with a bunch of people and shovels. Yep. Now, I don't think people really understand that they see the desert around us, and they don't understand just a little ways away, you go up a few thousand feet, you've got actual forest and timber. Yep, that's true. Yep. And, now, the reason they're saying, what is the reason they give that we can't use power tools or heavy equipment? It's called the Wilderness Act. Oh. And uh, that prevents anything modern being up there. And they also say a uh, wheelbarrow is modern equipment. Right. I'll turn it over to you. Uh, Good morning, everybody. You guys can hear me okay? Like, uh, First off, we just want to make sure that we thank you guys so much. I hope you guys all know how much we really, really appreciate you guys coming out. And yeah. Thank you, Jack. Wow. Woo! Yeah! Thank you everybody for coming. I can't tell you how thrilled I am that there's so many people that are willing to step up and you know be red-blooded Americans and do the right thing. I kind of want to explain just a little bit about why we're here. I think most of you have probably read, have talked about it, but we have three springs right now operating on temporary basis. One of them in particular is very vulnerable to these floods coming this year, which we know are coming in July. There's going to be the monsoons, there's going to be some massive flooding, and we're likely to lose most of what we have installed, and we can't afford that. So you all are here today to go up with me and Sherry and a bunch of other people that are willing to put this thing to rest. We're going to protect Gardner Spring. There's a little bit of water flowing out of there now, but we need to protect a diversion up there and, and get the water deflected around us. So when these floods come, we don't lose it. So I want to thank you all again so much for coming, and I look forward to seeing you guys up on that mountain. Bring your water. All right, make sure that you guys have some food with you. If you don't, look around. We're going to be providing that for you. We'll have some snacks, some oranges, apples, various things to keep you guys hydrated, all right? So if you need any help with anything, seek me out. Seek any of the people on the Tombstone Shovel Brigade, uh, the, the, the board members, and Sherry Kammeyer. She's She is our safety coordinator, and she's also uh, probably... You know, the person that supported me most of this has more hours on that mountain than anybody but me. And I, like I said, this woman is going to make sure we're all safe up there. And I want to introduce you to her right now. And her name is Miss Sherry Kammeyer. Hello again, everybody. Again, you know, I know we can't say this enough today, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for coming. Thank you, Sherry, Kevin, Jack. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for standing with Tombstone, because standing with Tombstone is standing for your city, and standing for your county, and standing for your state. Because this conflict that's playing out in Tombstone, where you have a city that for 130 years had access to its water and its road, to service its road and keep water coming to a town that's a wooden town in the middle of the desert, in the middle of a drought, where water is life. And for 130 years, they had access to that water and 
all of a sudden, because of arbitrary and irrational federal policy, yes. the federal yeah. government has cut yeah. off that life That's right. to the town of Tombstone to the point that this city, with its citizens and its businesses, are minutes away from going up in smoke. Now here's the ironic part of that. Tombstone is required under federal regulation to be maintained as a national historic site. And it's that same federal government with irrational and arbitrary policy keeping it from the life, keeping it from its water and accessing the road to restore and maintain the life to this wooden town in the middle of a desert, in the middle of a drought. So what do you do in Tombstone? When this city and this county and this state has not only the right but the obligation to protect the health and the safety and the welfare of its citizens, and that's butting up directly with a federal government that says for some reason after 130 years that we simply don't know, for some reason you can't use your road. For some reason you can't go up into the mountain to restore the rights and the access to your water and restore and maintain the life and the safety and the health to your town. What do you do when faced with that choice? Wait a minute. Do you continue to simply relent to irrational and arbitrary federal policy? Or do you act as is your moral obligation to protect the health, the safety, and the welfare of your citizens? That conflict is playing out all over the West and all over the United States. And so standing with Tombstone and the good sheriff and the city council members and, and the Tombstone Shovel Brigade, standing with them is standing for your community and standing for your state and standing for this great unprecedented nation. In this nation it was founded upon a principle, an unprecedented principle that it is a governing partnership. Not a subordinated subdivision. Our states are governing partners with the federal government. This isn't a system where we have the liberty to do what the federal government tells us we can do. This is not a system where the rights of property and the means of production are centralized in a command and control centralized structure. The very ideology that we are based on is the right and control of property and water. And with liberty we produce prosperity. And with prosperity we can bless other people's lives and create wealth. That's our ideology and our system. And so we now have the opportunity to stand with Tombstone and stand for our cities and our counties and our states and stand for this great United States of America. Friends, this is a wonderful time to be alive. We are lucky not to live in pale and timid times. We've been blessed with the opportunity to stand for something, for liberty and freedom and fairness, and these are things worth fighting for, worth devoting our lives to. So let us go forth with good cheer and stout hearts, happy warriors out to seize back a country and a world of freedom. Thank you. Okay. Keith Van Heinigan reporting for the Tucson Tea Party from Tombstone, Arizona, where citizens from near and far have come to save this town, to dig out the springs and the wells that feed this city its crucial water in the middle of the desert, the water that Barack Hussein Obama, his EPA, and his Forest Service are denying the people. It's time to go to work. Man and his dog. Man, it's the only true friend. That's right. <coughs> hi ho, hi ho. It's off to work. We got. Doesn't anybody remember that song? Oh man. It's off to work. We go. You have good spirits. Oh yeah. Well. Better. Get him, Gabby. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. That is the key. is uh, basically uh, suggested that we sue them in order to get the You get way too documented today. <laughs> <laughs>
in the shade again. Well, no, it's deeper over here. Oh, man, I missed it. <laughs> You've been documented again. We're not there yet? No. <laughs> 15 more minutes. Uh, a little bit more than that. Uh, well, I ain't gonna lie to you. Two and a half mile hike to get up to the springs above Sierra Vista that feeds Tombstone its water. Go from like 4,000 hiking up to 7,000 feet. It's rough terrain. I'm only 48. Been rode hard, put up wet a lot. Yeah, I've broken a lot of bones. Had a few operations. I tell you what, this is a young man's game. How do you let us bring up heavy equipment? Mr. Federal Government, you can go straight to hell. You're killing this country. That's right, Mr. Federal Government. You're killing your people. We the people are not the problem. You are. Tombstone is a national historic landmark. And you're trying to cut off its water supply? You want to see it burn? You want to see people die? Mr. Federal Government, don't come to Arizona. Because we don't love you. Because you sure as hell don't love us. Yeah, that's right. Taxed enough already. You sorry, sad, sad piece of. The life of rocks, isn't it? I catch that? Yes, I did. I caught that. Oh, yeah, you know me. You're not going to Congress without me now. 